Hello, everyone. I'm the producer of Dragon Ball Legends, Toshi. It's good to be here. And with me, of course. Hello, everyone. I'm the advertisement producer, Kai. It's time for reviews and stuff. The new Universe Rep tag has been getting a lot of use this year already. That is right. Characters with tag Universe Rep, such as Legends Limited, Android 17, and Ultra Hit, and Super Saiyan 2 Kefla, have been rolling in and getting powered up. So, parties based around the tag are starting to show up more lately. We think tag Rival Universe has also gotten easier to use as well. Its type stop is also pretty strong by itself. Oh yeah, definitely. Of course, it does restrict an opponent's action after all. Your opponents won't even have to chance cover change as well, so they'll really start feeling the pressure against Ultra Hit. Now, as we announce on our official social media, if this reviews and stuff gets enough views, we'll be getting everyone in game rewards. Correct. Depending on where you live, it might be difficult to tune in live, but you can also help spread the word to get us more viewers. Now, let's get down to business, starting with Legends Update Info. We have plenty to share today about upcoming updates, so here is our first topic. We're adding a ribbon mark to characters who have bonuses that increase item drops. So for example, in raid battles, certain characters will increase the number of raid medals earned if you add them to your party. And this addition should make it much easier to tell which characters will increase those drops. You've got it. Battle bonus characters who deal increased damage to the enemy, and bonus characters who have bonuses that increase item drops currently have the exact same mark on their character portraits, so it's a little difficult to tell the difference. Therefore, to make it easier to find characters with item drop bonuses, we're adding a new ribbon mark to the game. And that is not all. You'll also now be able to sort based on battle bonus characters and bonus characters when editing your party. This really is a great addition and should help ease some frustration when putting together a party for raids. You'll still need to check the reward tab if you want to know specifics, like how much of a bonus each character gives, but this will definitely help you know at a glance who has one and will really reduce your time on the selection screen. Now, on to this! When performing consecutive re-upgrades, we've added an option to continue until a red ability is obtained. This should make people happy. It will be especially useful slots with only three options, such as third slot of certain unique equipment. They would always stop on orange every time, so it's required a lot of manual input. Right. As a result, they really took a lot more time than we originally intended. But now you can safely re-upgrade until you get a red ability, and the process of upgrading equipment should be a lot less stressful. Next up. It's currently a little hard to tell when the boss changes elements in hyperdimensional co-op. There is a gauge, of course, but now we've made it even easier to understand. Oh, I see. There's a current effect now. This should hopefully prevent players from accidentally using rushing rushes with unfavorable elements. There's a pretty big difference to the amount of Davin's Yun inflict when using a favorable versus and unfavorable elements. So this is a lifesaver. Keep the boss's element in mind and find the most effective path to victory in hyperdimensional co-op. Now, the next one is our last bit of update info. We're implementing Legends Rankings. It may be easiest to think of these as a version of the guild rankings made for individual players. Playing events and PvP, obtaining certain items, and other in-game actions or results will earn you points, which will be used to rank you against other users. So it's a ranking that compares players' in-game activity? That is it. Legends Rankings will be held for one month at a time and will be replacing the current monthly missions. They will include a top world ranking containing all users as well as multiple group rankings containing specific groups of players. There will also be a short preseason for the first time only, so please take this chance to try out Legends rankings for yourselves. Of course, there are going to be rewards as well. Since the ranking take into account overall activity, 
even players who focus on events and other PvE contents will be able to compete against other users and earn rewards. That's great. PvP-focused players already have rating matches, don't they? We're also planning to make it so that more points can be earned in PvE contents, such as events, than in PvP. So, even players who don't play much PvP can reach the top ranks. We hope everyone has fun aiming for the top of the rankings. We've also increased the responsiveness of the exchange shop and made it possible to sort characters by their release dates. They're small changes, but they should make the game more fun to play, so I hope you all enjoy them. That's all for today's update info. For the next segment, we'll look at what's happening around Legends. There's a lot of event-related info to cover, so let's get started. Dragon Ball Legends has passed 70 million users worldwide. It's great to know that so many people are playing our game. Especially because this isn't just downloads, it's people actually playing. We want to thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts. To celebrate, we'll be holding a 70 million users worldwide campaign. There are plenty of events and campaigns planned, but today we'll be introducing just a few. And first up is... To celebrate 70 million users worldwide, there will be a special login bonus. The rewards you'll get from this login bonus can be seen here. If you log in for 14 days during the period, you'll get 500 Chrono Crystals. So make sure you don't forget to log in. Let's keep these announcements going. Up next... Logging in during the campaign period or playing the Tournament of Power, PvP, or Co-op Battles will earn you 70 million users Celebration Medals. These medals can be then exchanged for Legends Limited Multi Z Power 100 and other fantastic rewards at the Exchange Shop. But that's not all. Another part of celebrating 70 million users worldwide is this set of special missions. New missions will be added every day, and completing all of them will net you 1,000 Chrono Crystals. You can either clear them each day as they come, or clear them all at once on your day off. That's right. Clear these missions in whatever way suits you. Moving on... A special version of Ultra Space Time Rush is coming. This is a supersized version, consisting of 7 rushes with 32 battles in total. You'll be able to get more than three times as many Zenkai Rush Medals and Rush Medals compared to a regular Ultra Space Time Rush. There are more Zenkai characters than ever now, so it's great that you can get a bunch of Zenkai Rush Medals at once. 32 battles should be really satisfying to play through too. It is a lot, but the event will be open for a whole month, and the difficulty ramps up from that of Ultra Space Time Rush Light all the way up to the difficulty of the regular Ultra Space Time Rush. So, it shouldn't be too hard for players to play through it at all. Got it. Whether you take your time and clear it little by little, or do the whole things in one burst, play the rush your way. Next, we have another event that's received a bit of a power up. Have a look at this. The non-stop raids are four consecutive weeks of raid events. Oh, this event really seems like it will be worth doing. Definitely. These raids won't end once the boss has been defeated. They're more like world challenge raids and can be challenged as many times as you want during the event period. They may be non-stop, but you can go at your own pace. What I'm most curious about though is the rewards. Well, it'll be four raids across four weeks, but we plan to make it a little easier to claim them. It also means that you can only earn up to 500 Chrono Crystals from each, but since there will be four of them, you can still get a massive 2,000 Chrono Crystals in total. 2,000 Chrono Crystals. Maybe we should have called them uh, the Can't Miss Raids, but of course, we've also got some other rewards too, so please make sure to participate. Coming up next... The Golden Treasure Battle is coming to Legends. How is this different from the treasure battle that's currently in the game? First of all, the number of treasure chests you can open increases to 5. Not only that, but instead of the regular rewards, 
Opening them will give you a new exchange item that can be traded at the exchange shop for an item of your choosing. I see. What kind of rewards are available from the exchange shop then? You can trade for Chrono Crystals, Multi Z Power, and other great rewards. In fact, there will be up to 1,000 Chrono Crystals available. 1,000 Chrono Crystals really is fantastic. Even if you just play once a day, you'll be able to get this new exchange item and make great progress towards grabbing all 1,000 Chrono Crystals. Remember that in Treasure Battle, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, so even if you don't usually play PvP, definitely give it a shot. And here's another popular event that first appeared at the end of last year during the Legends Festival. This campaign won't start until March, so it will be a while, but we're going to hold another Equipment Upgrade Bonanza. Obtaining and upgrading equipment during the campaign period will apply a bonus increase to its abilities. It's the perfect time to really focus on upgrading and, finally, getting your hands on some truly top-tier equipment. The previous one was had last month, right? Yes, and since everyone loved it so much, we're holding another one. The campaign will be largely the same as the one from last month, meaning you'll get a bonus to most equipment abilities. So take advantage of it and get the best equipment you can. Up next, we'll be holding a Hoi Poi to celebrate reaching 70 million users worldwide. This is a mainstay for anniversary campaign and the Resident Festival, but what item can we expect to see this time? Here are the obtainable items. There's some amazing stuff there, like someone's ticket for someone featuring new characters. Exactly. Hoi Poi points will be available from each of the campaign events, so make sure to collect a ton to get some fantastic items. Now, here's the last piece of news about the 70 million users campaign. There will be a consecutive summon where one Legends Limited character is guaranteed. That's always exciting news, but what Resident Limited characters will be included in the summon? People are sure to curious about that right now. It will feature every Legends Limited character up to last August's Super Saiyan Trunks team. So it even includes the host anniversary's Ultra Instinct Goku? You've got it. It's a truly jaw-dropping lineup. The summon can also be played up to five times total, so you'll be able to get at least Five Legends Limited characters guaranteed. Tons of Chrono Crystals are available in the 17 million users campaign. So take this chance to use them and get some Legends Limited characters. That's all we have to talk about today for the 70 million users campaign. But there's still more planned for it, including a Super Boost campaign and other events. So please look forward to when it launches. Now, let's move on to this. Legends Battle Royale Girls is coming. We talked about having a Legends Battle Royale for tag girls in our previous episode, didn't we? Yes, we did. We don't want to only do tags for new characters. We want to try all kinds of different Battle Royale themes. What kind of party will you try out here? It's really hard to decide, actually. This month saw a Super Saiyan 2 Kefla getting a Zenkai Awakening, as well as another getting released as a new event-exclusive character. So. Putting them both in a party to focus it around tag universe rep might actually be a good idea. But Android 21 and Android 21 Good also got Zenkai Awakenings last month. So using them and building a party around tag Android also seems pretty interesting too. It's good to make tag Android pretty strong. But Resident Battle Royale is not just about what party you use, it also has special rules that makes it a little bit different and great rewards like Chrono Crystals and PvP message. So please give it a try. That event exclusive Super Saiyan 2 Kefla we mentioned is also still available, so use this chance to play the event and get a free character. That's all we have for information on events today. Shall we move on to our final bit of news? Yes, we shall. Take a look at this. Entertainment! 
How'd you like my power? Not bad. There's more! Here you go! Take this! There you are! As you just saw, sparking Master Roshi and Legends Limited Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku from the Dragon Ball Super's Universe Survival Saga are coming to Legends. We are finally getting a Goku that's transformed into Ultra Instinct Saiyan. You said it. We'll explain their abilities in detail a little bit later, but yes, both of these characters are Tag Universe Rep. So this tag just keeps getting better and better. Did I just see Master Roshi use Evil Containment Wave? We'll also talk about that in a bit more detail in just a second. But first, let's look at some gameplay. Getting sleepy! Take it! Army, army! All right. How'd you like my power? Vegeta! There's more! Here you go! Take this! There you are! Here I come! There! This is the end! Fighting for everyone. I won't lose. Now, let's talk about those abilities. Starting with Master Roshi. The Ultimate Arts Evil Containment Wave has a completely brand new ability that allows it to seal the enemy character. If you were to point to anything as this character's signature, it'd definitely be this new Ultimate Arts. When it hits, as long as the enemy isn't defeated by the attack, it will seal them, and they will be unable to enter the battlefield. While the enemy is in this state, they will remain, so until either Master Roshi or all other enemy battle members are defeated. If a player's character is sealed, they'll have to continue fighting with one less in their party, giving you the advantage if you can land the evil containment wave. Of course, Master Roshi also has abilities other than this ultimate arts, including a permanent boost to arts card draw speed and a decrease to blast arts cost, making this character a perfectly capable blast attacker regardless. Plus, the powerful special arts can even immobilize the enemy, so Master Roshi has some pretty high specs overall. Moving on to Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku. This revival character will transform into Ultra Instinct Sign when own health reaches zero. The Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form gets a powerful buff to damage inflicted from the start of battle, allowing Goku to mount an impressive offensive from the outset. The main ability also allows you to get back on your feet and reorganize yourself. Plus, Goku is a pro at finishing off enemies and has more than enough power to go up against even your opponent's ace attacker before reviving. After reviving and transforming into Ultra Instinct Sign, multiple powerful effects will activate, turning Goku into a nigh-untouchable force of nature. Not only that, but upon revival, 
This character will also get the same unique gauge as the Ultra Instinct Sign Goku that's already in Legends, giving you the ability to evade enemy attacks and expertly hold your ground. However, the effects of a number of Goku's abilities will run out after a certain number of timer counts elapse, so it's best to settle things as quickly as possible after transforming into Ultra Instinct Sign. This isn't just a revival character. Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku has plenty of powerful abilities before reviving and great utility in parties built around the new Universe Rep tag, making this character an indispensable asset to your roster. We hope you all try to get this Goku for yourselves. Thank you, Toshi. I'm sure this new Goku that can revive has gotten people fired up, but I bet they're also really interested in trying Master Roshi's new ability. I definitely am. Much like in the original series, Evil Containment Wave will seal an enemy when it hits and prevent them from entering the battlefield until the right conditions have been cleared. We've never seen anything quite like it before in Legends, so it should provide some interesting strategic options. We already have effects like no switching, but completely sealing our character is pretty unique. It's great that's the first ever sparking Masaroshi gets it. We hope you'll all check it out. Of course, Goku can revive and, after transforming into Ultra Instinct Sign, will be truly overwhelming. I hope everyone gives the new Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku and Master Roshi a try. And with that, we've reached the end of our show today. We talked about the 70 million users campaign, but I'd just like to reiterate that we're so pleased to have all of you playing. Thank you so much. We hope you continue to enjoy Legends even more from now on. Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour 2023 is also on the horizon. That is right. We talked about it in last month's reveals and stuff, but to explain it again, it's a two-day event in Las Vegas from March 4th to 5th. Of course, it'll be available to watch online as well. There'll be a Legends tournament featuring a new special rule set, so I hope you're all looking forward to watching. Anyway, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. We hope to see all of you next time. Bye! Bye!